What's up YouTube family? It is Shannon Craft once again with another barber tutorial video and today we're going to do a high taper or what's also known as a blowout. As you can see I started putting in my first guideline with my Anda Slimline Pro LIs and I'm shaving that off. Then I'm going to go in with my Anda's Profile Shaver and just really bald that out really nice uh, right below that line. Now I'm coming in with my Wall Magic Clips and my Wall Premium Number One Guard and going with the grain. We don't want to go against the grain at this point because we're going to cut the waves off if we do. He likes to keep some nice little waves in there so we just want to clean that up. Also whenever you're doing it make sure you do a good job cleaning those hairs up. If you got to go over it a few times uh, do what you have to do to get that good clean precise looking haircut. Once you get in the little crown area where I'm at right now Make sure that you kind of, there again, go with the pattern of the hair. Go with the grain so you're not making any uh, bald spots in that area. That's very important. Watch for cowlicks also because if you go uh, against the cowlick when the hair is going in the opposite direction that you're actually naturally going in, then you'll create spots. So now I'm going into my second guideline, and I'm going with the... Uh, Oster fast feeds and I have the blade all the way up no guard all the way open rather made the first guideline now I'm going and I basically took that second guideline rather uh, you know maybe about three quarters of an inch above the the other guideline now I'm just uh, closing it about halfway and now all the way close and just trying to you know work my way down to knock out the line that the first guideline that we made And I just kind of tap around with the corners to make sure I knock that out. So now I have my uh, number one guard, my purple magnetic guard on my fast feeds. And I went down with the grain and then I went back up against the grain just to kind of blend that in a little bit better. And you'll see I do that several times. Now I actually uh, close that number one, went back up with the number one in and, and now I actually think I have my 1 16th or my zero guard on there. Yes, I do. So I went up against it. Now there again, I'm kind of coming up against it. As you can see, I am going up a little higher than what I normally like to do. I usually like to keep the blend really low. But because of um, just the texture of his hair and there's certain spots that are, you know, a whole lot darker, uh, I, I went ahead and I just kind of you know, st stood back a little bit and try to use uh, my judgment on what I need to lighten and what I need to darken to get a better blend. So I did, you know, stretch that blend out a little bit, make it go a little farther up. But now I'm just going to work on compressing all of my detail work right there at the bottom so uh, it has a nice clean blend from the zero to uh, the 116 going into the one. So as you can see, I'm just kind of tapping around using the corner of the blade. I'll do a lot of uh, lever play where I open it, close it, you know. And now that I feel like I have the blend looking decent, I always come back with a shear over comb and, and just touch up any little spots. But uh, I, this is, I don't know why I do this, but I just always do. Uh, I like to put a little edge on it just because whenever I'm looking at the blend, standing back to me, it helps me see the blend better. How's it looking? Is it where I want it to end or where I want it to start? And uh, and for whatever reason, when I put a little edge on it, it just helps me kind of get a better idea of what it's looking like, how it's coming together. And then I just start tapping out things that I don't like. Here I am going with my sheer over comb technique. And I don't care what uh, ethnicity of hair that you have or what texture of hair that you have I pretty much always use sheer over comb and the reason being is because I feel like I have better control on getting things out lines dark spots whatever that before I couldn't really get with the clipper so without creating a, a another line or you know a hole or something like that a patch so then I'll comb the hair down really good and you know just kind of keep working with it to get it looking the way I want it to look now uh, I'm going in and obviously you know hitting the edge up his hairline is a little bit further back um, and that's just where it naturally is 
so I do want to clean it up and I want it to be as straight as possible without going farther back on that edge um, you know I, I know that some people they just barely tap because they're afraid of you know I don't want to take the edge back too far I totally understand that however um, I am one of those barbers and I know some people don't like that but I am one of those that I do want it to look as clean and dark and crisp as possible now if if that means taking you an inch back I will not do that um, however if I can stay close closer to the natural edge and just take it back I've heard uh, get beam say before that every edge is a pushback because you are pushing the edge back and you are taking some hairs off but I began to just uh, you know clean up that edge kind of there again keeping it as natural as possible but as straight and clean as possible and I notice a lot of times with curlier hair um, that you'll see little hairs poking out and so what I do is I go in now I, I, on top I did the number one guard but now I'm going in with the uh, 1 16th guard or the zero guard the purple magnetic guard and I'm going with the grain just on the edge area because it cleans it up and knocks off a lot of those stray hairs and then I'll come in and hit that line again and I'm telling you if you use that technique it'll really make that thing crisp and sharp and it'll just it'll pop man without all the little hairs um, poking out everywhere uh, so right now what we're doing is we're doing the other side just like we did um, to the first side and I started out with my open blade working my way down just uh, closing it until I got to my first guideline then I went into the number one open uh, there again I went down like I'm going now and then I'll go up and and then I put on the uh, 1 16th guard and and do the same thing just working my way you know up trying to take that line out going in different directions and then I took it off and you know it's just uh, the whole process over again now because his hair is going in different directions and there again I'm wanting to uh, you know kind of bring the whole blend I want the the blend to stay tight and, and, and real defined at the bottom where I made my first guideline and where I'm working at right now but as you can see it gets a little fuller and a little darker and for whatever reason he just has some heavier um, thicker spots in his hair so right behind that blend there is a darker spot and I want to knock that down so I'll come in in just a minute like right now with the, the you know shear over comb and I'll start knocking down some of that bulk uh, to kind of blend what I did with the clippers into that heavier spot that's in the back and, and I'll probably even uh, take a number one and, and go against that again uh, and going with the grain just to try to knock some of that out but because it is heavier um, like I said I could either go with a shorter guard and just lightly go against that darker area to knock some of that down or just come in with the shear over comb and just knock down a lot of that bolt to try to blend it in better I feel like the blends you know coming together pretty good but I'll go against the grain and, and with curlier hair you need to make sure you continually you know comb it down in the direction that they want to brush it so that way you can see if that blend is coming together or if there's anything that you need to knock out any lines or dark spots and when I'm working on just little detail work with the dark spots you'll notice like right now I'm just using the tips of the of the shears when I want to knock down a lot of bulk I'll use uh, a lot of the blade but then when it's just little detail work knocking out dark spots I'll just use the tips of the shears now um, you know there again for my viewing pleasure <laughs> I just went ahead and I and, uh, got my my slim lines and, and just kind of cleaning up above the ear because there again for me I can kind of step back and I can look at the area that I'm working in once it's starting to get cleaned up and then I'll know okay do I want to change anything on the blend do I want to knock anything out so basically going into the back knocking down some of that bulk that I was talking about and I believe I went ahead and uh, went to a shorter guard I may have stuck with the number one but 
I also may have went in with the 116 guard just to knock down a little more of that bulk in the back. Um, you know, because we went on a little higher taper last time that he asked for, and I felt like it was still, you know, pretty pretty clean in that area, it didn't take much to just, uh, you know, taper that in. And a lot of times people have almost like a natural taper um, in the bottom of their hair where it starts to get a little thinner. And it doesn't take a whole lot of work on some, on this particular one. Uh, you know, it didn't take much. And I'll come back in uh, where you see a little heavier line and I'll hit sheer over comb with that as well. Uh, but once you, you know, taper that bottom out and then you throw those lines on there, uh, you know, it just begins to look really crisp and fresh. Man, I hope these YouTube videos are helping you guys. Also, I've shared with you before, if you're not following me on Instagram, I'd love for you to do that. You can go to Instagram and look for S for Shannon, S craft underscore blends with a Z. Also, if you're not following uh, the channel, man, or subscribe to the channel, please subscribe, like, comment, share. I would love your feedback. Everyone that's giving me feedback, letting me know what they enjoy or even things that they are learning uh, or have learned uh, from their experience. Share that with me, man. I love to hear your comments. I will respond back as quick as I can and interact as much as I can. Uh, I'm here to help you guys out. I've said before, I'm not the best in the world. There's a lot of great barbers out there and I try to be a, 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 a you know, a, a person who learns from everyone i don't care if you're new to the game or you've been in it 50 years i want to learn man anything i can learn to become better uh that's what i want to do so check this out right now i can see he has this uh defined kind of like dip right above his ear um you can see going towards his eye there's there's like this muscle or this bone that kind of pops out especially when he just did his eyebrows up and, and when I look at the blend a certain way, it looks blended really nice. And then when you look at it in different angles, because of that particular muscle or that bone that's um, on his skull, it can throw little shadows and make it kind of not look as blended as you think it is. And, and that's why it's important to turn the chair around, to look around in different angles. And, um, and I feel like the blend was looking pretty good. I might have did a few touch-ups that I had to cut out for sake of time. Um, but you got the main process. Now I'm just cleaning them up with the razor on his edge so we can get that edge once again looking crispy and popping. Boom, there's the finished product. I hope you guys like it. Once again, subscribe. If you have subscribed, hit that notification button so you can get more of my videos. God bless you guys. Once again, thank you so much for following me and watching this channel. God bless y'all.